terminal, it is a habit and a bad one. Um, but uh, if I'm wearing rubber shoes, don't have my belt buckle up against the car frame, actually I can do this and I can feel a little tingle. A little tingle. And, uh, and tell things are live. But, but you're right, you shouldn't do that. The other thing he <laughs> caught us on was we had a couple of bolts, not these bolts, but like these, hex head bolts um, on our bracket, mounting our bracket to the... Um, 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 oh, our belly band to the bracket. The belly yeah. brand band to, to the, the right drive shaft yeah. um, carrier bearing bracket. Right. And um, he said that those sharp edges of those bolts would eventually cause a wear spot on our motor, and it might, you know, wear through the water jacket or something. All right. Um, I, Sounds good. I'm used to thinking of motors with cast iron um, bodies and machined steel ends like this, but since we're in this, uh, we've discovered a crack in the face of our MES DEA motor, right. and they're trying to determine how it must have been our fault that it got there. And uh, so it is pretty lightweight stuff, so I'm, I'm kind of looking at everything and taking everything seriously. Right. Uh, so Tom, we have okay. implemented your suggestion, which was to put um, the uh, carriage bolts in there with rounded heads. And I think That's it's an excellent su suggestion. We won't have any sharp corners on the uh, um, bolt, and they're just shallow enough. By the time we put those in and suck them into our bracket, um, they're really sort of below where the, the line of the belly band would be to the motor. So we're really just gonna have a little contact on a, a soft uh, round head um, to get them to go down into the uh, uh, bracket, uh, and you want them where you can tighten and loosen them, and they'll be immobile. Right. Uh, we kind of filed off the corners of the uh, the little square, oh, the square uh, carriage the, bolt yeah. thing, and uh, to where it would go down in there and kind of jam. And uh, that's let me uh, tighten it up very nicely, and we have a much uh, softer interface to our thing. So thank you, Tom Alvary. Yeah. Good work, Tom. Um, and we're following. Uh, the work on his thing. This guy's almost like a uh, poster child for what we're trying to do. Um, when we started doing this, a lot of the EV conversions were frankly uh, guys who, uh, well, for, uh, for good reason, they were experimenting. Right. So, yeah, no one had done you, it don't, you don't experiment on a good car. You get a piece of junk, and if it works out, you got a car. And if it doesn't, you you, you, you still don't. got the same old piece of junk. <laughs> so we were seeing a lot of junk cars. I kept saying, when these custom rotter guys come across this, they're going to go nuts. It'll be the end of uh, internal combustion hot rods because this is so much fun. And Tom's pretty much there. He uh, got a job at, when he was 15 years old with a bunch of old guy mechanics. Oh, that's what he said, yeah. In and, yep. and his email, yep. and uh, he's done about 30 cars. He's down to a 66 Pontiac GTO or something okay. that, with a 13 second quarter mile. And, um, but he's doing this moon racer and then he's got uh, bigger plans. All right, good. And uh, so he's, uh, he's getting on board. Um, doing a lithium battery project at 400 pounds. Not a bad strategy Good. if you want to get into this without spending a bunch of Ducats. Uh, there's a lot of guys doing uh, bicycles even, but motorcycles. Mm -hmm. And this will be a three-wheeler like an Aptera, but uh, from motorcycle parts and so okay. forth. I think it's called um, www. the moon racer or the moon ray. Dot blog. Yeah, Moonray, I think, is what he and, said. Um, so we'll be following Tom there. Yeah, the Moonray. And uh, welcome to the Army. I think he's going to be a, a, a big plus in uh, proselytizing the uh, electric car. So that's our bracket. We've got another guy. This is kind of interesting, what I found out this week. This is our Speedster Part Duh uh, motor. This is a... Uh, High performance golf cars. High, high performance golf cars. AC50. This is a three phase AC motor. And um, it's kind of interesting in several ways. It's a little bit smaller than the Warp 9. It's supposed to be a direct drop in for a Warp 9. We're kind of struggling with that. Not badly, just little things. No, but just a couple odd of things. things. Yeah. 
One of them is with the uh, Warp 9, um, you have an auxiliary tail shaft. Our motor came with out one. Right. And that gives us kind of a target of opportunity to do some stuff. We don't have a tail shaft. There's a little encoder back here on the back end that gives the controller angular position, rate information um, to the controller for the three-phase um, inverter out output. But there's no rotor on the back. In addition to doing part duh, we've kind of developed a relationship with a guy named Dwayne Ball up in uh, Ballston Lake, New York. Okay. A couple um, of New Yorkers. And uh, Dwayne is uh, kind of working on our side of the street. In fact, he's kind of doing, I'm picking out the components for him and, and, and talking. So he's using the same motor in a back um, roller, but it's the Spider 550. Oh, yeah. Saw a couple of photos of that. And I'm going to put those photos up on the screen here. You got to see what this guy's got a race car mechanic helping him. And they are doing just a bang up job. I mean, this is some gorgeous work. This guy's battery boxes. I've asked him to do mine. Yeah, I saw um, a couple. They look great. He got his AC50 mm -hmm. from the same guys, Thunderstruck Motors. Thunderstruck Motors. His has a tail shaft. So I had Brian call this week. Ours is an AC50-02-1, and it does not have the auxiliary tail shaft. And what's the part number of the one that does? Uh, AC50-02-1. Uh, dash dash one. Dash one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love new industries. They're so much fun. <laughs> They're just riddled with professionals and... Uh, it, it's just a hoot. <laughs> so you can get the AC50-02-1 without the auxiliary tail shaft, or you can get the model AC50-02-1 with the auxiliary right, tail that's shaft. That's right. That's correct. But you have to specify it, I guess, by part number? No. Well, <laughs> with, with or without tail shaft. With or without the auxiliary <laughs> tail shaft. Let me show you why this is kind of cool. Uh, an auxiliary tail shaft's kind of cool. You can run an air conditioner off of them. We're not going to have an air conditioner. Um, you can uh, um, but run an alternator off of them. Some guys do. I don't get the point. We'll use a DC to DC converter. But here is our motor, the end of it. And I've got this encoder here and a flat shelf. We've got a little cable we got to get around. And four half-inch bolt holes. And, of course, the motor, if you look in here, has some fan blades. And, in fact, there's some other fan blades on the front. Uh, this is so it'll move air through the motor. I'm pretty sure that in our rotation, it will suck it in this way and blow it out against the adapter. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, some of the cooling for the motor. Right. Let's talk about that a little bit. I'm having a lot of conversations with some really knowledgeable people that cannot get this. And I don't know how to explain it. Maybe I don't understand it myself. I think <laughs> I do. Let's give it a shot. This is a 52 horsepower peak motor, a continuous horsepower of 15. And that's the power of this motor, right? Yes, on the label. It's total nonsense. <laughs> An electric motor doesn't have a power. It doesn't right. have a horsepower. Um, it uses the force of the universe, the repelling force of electrons in a magnetic field, which is unlimited. And this has unlimited power. Now, Trace asked this question, and I told him that the, smoke, the motor was actually smoke-powered. There's a small <laughs> container of smoke in the motor, and it will make as much power as you want until you develop a smoke leak. When the smoke goes out, it, it's pretty much That's done. It. it won't do it again. <laughs> but, and this sounds terribly facetious and even a little bit abusive. It's actually quite true. That is how electric well, motors work. The, the power doesn't come from the motor. The power comes from the controller and the batteries. Right. You can put them in the motor. It will do whatever you tell it until the resistance against it is such that the current builds up in the windings and they melt. And there's your smoke? And, the, and then you get smoke. 
and they short out and your motor won't turn anymore. Beyond that, how long are you talking about doing the power and how much right, power do correct. you want to do? Electric motors traditionally are rated as an insulation class, a class H insulation or class F insulation, which is sort of the grade of insulation and its resistance to heat. This motor, by saying it's rated at a continuous uh, 